Hello everybody, welcome to Telly Talks where we talk about life, growth, relationships, and all things in between. I have a very special guest with me today. He is a philanthropist and entrepreneur, Bill Westbrooks. Uh, thank you Thanks very much. Thanks for coming. Cheers to our water and lemon yes. and us being healthy. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for coming. So for the people that don't know your journey into philanthropy, into entrepreneurship, on true entrepreneurship yeah. <laughs> please tell us yeah. how you get started on where you are today absolutely well it's been an exciting uh, roller coaster of a journey uh, but I'm a small town guy from Chandler Arizona and so I started out uh, working in government and then I went into healthcare. I was getting my education at the same time so I ended up working myself through school uh, you know, we had, I had to pay for my own schooling, so I had to figure it out. So I was working and going to school. I ended up getting a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and then my doctorate degree. And I worked at a hospital for 10 years. And so fast forward, I decided to start my own healthcare company. And um, thank God I did. Being an entrepreneur is something that I wish I would have started earlier, but it's been a great journey and uh, a fun one at that. So I started my own healthcare company in real estate, um, mainly healthcare first, assisted living and wellness centers, uh, treatment centers for people with substance abuse. And I got that passion through the hospital where I worked because there was such a need for those two things. Absolutely. And, and this th was still in Arizona? This was all in Arizona. So I started out in Arizona and uh, kind of worked my way to LA and I'll, I'll tell you how, that, how I got here. But uh, I ended up uh, starting a healthcare company in assisted living and substance abuse treatment and it, you know, it went well. We helped a lot of people. And so I did that for about 11 years and then uh, I became very successful and I sold it. So once I sold the company, I wanted something else to do by that time, my son was growing up. I have a 20 year old son and he wanted to come to school in Los Angeles wow. and, and train tennis and so forth here in LA. And so we made the move. Um, it's just he and I, so I wanted, to, I wanted us to stay together Absolutely. you know, during these years. And so I started a company here in LA. I started a, a cannabis company in LA. So I have a cannabis company downtown Los Angeles. I employ people, you know, we just have a good business here as well. So that's the entrepreneur side. And through that process, I just, I started buying real estate. So I have apartment complex in Arizona. I have the commercial buildings here in Los Angeles. And so I go back and forth, mainly here in LA. What do you like more, Arizona or LA? They're both, I get that question a lot. It's a very <laughs> tough question because they they both have their advantages. You know, um, Arizona is very like new and clean and um, uh, there's a lot of uh, new infrastructure and things like that. LA has a lot of rich history and entertainment. And so there's a lot more to do here in Los Angeles. Absolutely. I, ob I absolutely love hit here more in the summertime. Oh, definitely. Phoenix is <laughs> a, it's it's 110 like degrees. <laughs> So I like it much better here in the summer. And then around this time of the year, like fall, I'll start going back to Phoenix more often and then working my other businesses. How was the transition from the medical field to cannabis, which is still kind of medicinal? It is. You know, recreational and medicinal. Correct. How is that? How is that transition for you? It's been a smooth transition for me as an entrepreneur. If you have really good business fundamentals, I believe you can transfer that into almost any business. Okay, so what's the business blueprint <clears throat> of being able to build and make a successful company that you feel is a part of your business fundamental? Well, for me, when I start a business um, or I buy a business, I start with the financials and I start okay. with, do I believe this business is going to be successful financially? And number two, is it a passion? Is it mm -hmm. something that I'm really excited about that I can see myself doing and being happy when it's tough because it's going to be tough? So those are my two major criteria is to really have a good financial business strategy and then make sure that I have the passion for that type of work. 
Absolutely. Do you find yourself here in philanthropy and you've won awards for your for your efforts in helping the community? How, do you find yourself more so helping others because I feel like that's a part of your your being more more I guess um, you have more passion helping others than you do with your business. Yeah, I wish I could just be a full time philanthropist. I'm, the I same really way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if I can just do this all day and not have to worry about funds, I would do this all day. It's a, right. it's a feeling that you get that it's just it is. like unmatched. It is. I agree 100 percent. And so that's why I work so hard with my businesses is so that I can be more of a philanthropist and eventually I will transition into just being a philanthropist. Um, but I enjoy it for the same reasons that you do, because it just brings so much joy and uh, happiness to people. It helps people in very difficult situations, uh, which we've all been into, what, whether Absolutely. it's, you know, financial or health or whatever it is, uh, everyone goes through these situations. So it's nice to Absolutely. be able to help people through that process and give them hope and then uh, have them you know, turn it around and then share as yeah, well. Absolutely. You know, pay it, it forward. Absolutely. It takes one good person to do just a good deed. It doesn't have to be monetary. It could just be a good deed and that can change someone's day. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. And I love that you're all for it. And I love that you're getting your flowers while you are here for it. So that's a blessing <laughs> as you. well too. It, so, um, I'm sorry, you're going to say something. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been a true blessing. Uh, to give back and so many wonderful uh, charities out there that really need support. So I always tell people, if you can't give money, give your time. Absolutely. You know, help out with something else because they, you know, they all need something. Absolutely. And with charity, it's not just funds. It is awareness to maybe someone doesn't know, exactly. you know, about a cause or might not know they're able to help or where to help. So that just makes it so much better if you can just alert everyone that you know, spread the word, you know, just raise awareness in general if you can't raise funds. So I think that's a beautiful thing. What is your most favorite, um, I guess, uh, organization to, to help out? Uh, the Children's Hospitals. Uh, so I support uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital, which I've been supporting for the last 10 to 12 years, and now Los Angeles Children's Hospital. That's so those cool. are my two favorites. But I also really uh, like uh, sharing with uh, women and children's shelters. Um, that's very near and dear to my heart just because of my situation growing up and my mom being a single parent and being 16 years old and then having five children, oh, you know, wow. back to back to back. And my father had passed away. So it was very difficult, but everyone ch chimed in. I had wonderful grandparents who help you know to make it a village uh absolutely. village to raise a child concept and that takes one yeah it, absolutely and so we had those wonderful things but we struggled also mm -hmm. and and that's why i feel like i've always wanted to be in a position to give back absolutely because i remember what it was like absolutely. when we really needed it absolutely and i i just feel like if you're in a position to just be of help like I said, whether you have a platform, whether you have the monetary funds to help, just help because Absolutely. people need it. And yeah. if you, especially if you have it, you yeah. know, if you have it to give, to help, please guys, just please give back. You know, even if it's just a word, a, a story post on Instagram, whatever it is, you know, raise awareness and give back to the people that are in need because that's super important to our, our environment and um, just, you know, helping each other. We're one at the end of the day. We're all human and we all deserve happiness in any form. So I right. think that's essential to, to happen. Very well said. <laughs> Thank you. Very well said. Thank you. So now that you have, um, you know, all your, all your philanthropic work, your businesses, when do you have time for just yourself and your, your son and just to enjoy life? Well, I make time. I, I, I prioritize. I'm a very spiritual person, so I meditate and I pray every morning and at night before I go to bed, I get on my knees. It's been a habit from my grandparents. My grandparents started a church 
back in Arizona. So it's just been instilled in me from yeah, the beginning. Same. And I always do that now. So I find time to be spiritual. Uh, you know, I believe in God and, and Jesus Christ as my, you know, my guide and my Lord and Savior. So mm -hmm. I always make time for that. And then I always make time for my family and my son. We spend time together, whether have, we have dinner or just hang out at the house. Sometimes, you know, he's a homebody. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm a homebody. I like to get out a little bit more than he does, but we always spend time together. So I make that a priority. That's amazing. What is he into doing? He's a t he's into tennis, mm -hmm. uh, and so he played tennis like semi pro for a little bit, just a, you know over a summer. He went overseas and played, and then I think he got a little burned out. It's a very mm -hmm. um, intense sport. Intense sport. It requires a lot. Absolutely. And so uh, I think he got a little burned out, but he still loves tennis. So he's teaching oh, at the Westwood amazing. Tennis Center now. So it's great because he he's great at working with kids. And so he loves doing that, and then he's going to school for business. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. So he mm -hmm. can take over the companies one day. <laughs> if he wants to. I mean, <laughs> Absolutely. That's I don't amazing. know. Right now he's 20, and he's just, you know, he's doing 20-year-old things. That's that's beautiful, too. You it have is. To, you have to grow, and you have to learn, and you have to Absolutely. figure out what you want to do in life. But that's amazing, too. So for everyone that comes on, we play this game. Uh, it's called Pick Your Poison. I'm going to play with you, too, so you're not in the hot seat by yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So you take two cards, just pick any two random cards. Okay. I'll start off. And we're going to both pick each other's, or you're going to pick your poison that I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to pick my poison that you're going to ask me. Okay. Oops. Had to. Okay. Ready? All right. Would you rather always have clothes that are extremely wrinkled, no matter how much you iron them, or perform your own medical procedures for the rest of your life? Wrinkle clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so, too. <laughs> I don't want to hurt myself or anybody else. Absolutely. Okay. So it's my turn now? Yes. We're um, going to do three rounds. Would you rather eat only baby food for the rest of your life? And then another or card. have all your illnesses treated by a... 12th century doctor. Oh, geez. Um, I, I'm a texture person when it comes to food and the puree of like the baby food. I wouldn't love it, but I would rather the baby food <laughs> than, than the 12th century doctor. You don't Absolutely. trust them. No, it's, it's, I just feel like Medicine has just evolved through the years. I agree. And I don't know. I don't I don't want you like pounding something <laughs> in me or, you know, doing some type of crazy sutures that yeah. aren't upgraded that I can't probably remove exactly. when, when I need them <laughs> removed. So I, I I prefer the baby food. <laughs> okay. I agree. Round two. Would you rather have a mosquito buzzing around your head whenever you're trying to go to sleep? Or Lose the ability to lie. Wow, that's <laughs> tough. Lose the ability to lie. Um, and the mosquitoes are out now. Like they got I these know. new breed of mosquitoes that came in. Yeah, I heard about it. Something about oh my God. carrying vaccines or something it too. It's insane. It's crazy. Insane. Yeah, I think I would... Um, I don't know. I think I would just live with the mosquitoes. Yeah. And I mean, and here's the thing, the losing the ability to lie, there's good lies too. Like, you know, you might not want to hurt yeah, someone's feelings. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Or like, you know, tell them something you know that you might not want them to know. That's... Like, you know, a family member passing, God forbid, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's why I said that. It's not, it's because of the ones where I feel like, oh, I have to tell them that. Right. So, oh. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, I would do the mosquitoes as well, too. I'm with you on that one. Okay. So, would you rather always feel like you didn't sleep the night before or have all of your food chewed by another person before eating it? Oh, gross. That's so <laughs> nasty. Um, I, I feel like I get to a point of, like, delusion all the time because I'm constantly working where I feel like I can't sleep if everything's not completed. And it doesn't work like that. Like, like you need sleep. Right. And um, 
I would probably have that feeling of losing sleep than just to eat already chewed food. I just, <laughs> I'm back to the puree. <laughs> I'm back to the puree. So I, I don't want no puree. Please take all the puree away from me. Yeah. I'm good on that. <laughs> I just Got think that's just so nasty. Like, yeah, oh. no, that's tough. Okay. Last but not least, be invisible to every, be invisible to every camera or use the word literally use the word literally in literally every conversation Ooh. well i'm not big on being on camera uh i was kind of leaning that way but then i like having uh family history and photos Absolutely. you know so i think i'll just take the literally i can i think i can Fit that in somehow. Yeah, I feel like that's such a, a California thing too. <laughs> yeah, I'll just slip it in. And hopefully, they don't even recognize it when I say it. <laughs> Absolutely, just have lengthy conversations where you're just maybe saying it once, one time, yeah. slipping in there one time. Yeah. All right. Um, here we go. Would you rather be unable to distinguish distinguish between your dreams and reality? Oh, that's a tough one. Or be unable to wear clothes that cover your belly button like show my stomach all the time yeah oh i'm showing my stomach all the time <laughs> you gotta you work yeah. for your body you know so it's like if you're working for yeah. your body and you don't have a you know you, you're proud of what you worked for then i'll, I'll show my stomach all day yeah but you i mean i just feel like certain things you know cover up and be respectful when it comes to certain things and certain places. Maybe show a little bit of stomach right. then and not just full stomach, but as long as it's, it's presentable. Belly yeah, yeah it's as long belly, as it's so. presentable. <laughs> I'm good. Tell everybody yeah. where they can find you, um, what you have coming up, what you have going on, and all that good stuff. Oh, thank well, thank you for your time again. I appreciate being on. My pleasure. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Maverick and then four H, like the number eight. It's my favorite number because it's like an infinity sign. I love so it. Maverick four H, and um, I'm in healthcare, real estate. Uh, globally, I'm in uh, energy and carbon credit, and I'm also part of a music uh, company called Breaking Hits. And so any of those, you can kind of find me there or if you're interested in any of those. Um, maybe we can talk sometime and I'll share it with you. Make sure you guys tune into everything Mr. Westbrooks has going on, all his philanthropical things that he does to help the community, um, all his businesses that he has going on, music. Um, oh my gosh, he has so much going on. <laughs> yeah, music, I'm busy. real estate. He's he's a busy man. Make sure you guys tune into what he has going on, and that is it for Telly Talks.